Hey, welcome back to my Minimax uh, 1100R build. Um, the last video, you saw that I just set these up here before I finished for the day. And now what we're, what we're gonna do is, um, I need to make sure, uh, well, the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the holes um, to uh, actually bolt the hinges. And what I've done, and I've gone and checked, I've checked my uh, measurement from here to my zero line and uh, that distance is correct um, I've checked I've measured from this point on both of them all the way back to uh, the hole that I have for the tailwheel bracket and those measurements are both exact so I'm 100% confident that I have everything aligned the way that it needs to be and so now I'm just going to throw my clamp back up here and hold this just while I drill um, drill these holes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm going to start the hole, um, and then I'm going to make myself just a block with a square. Make sure I've got a square three sixteenths hole in it um, that's drilled with the drill press, and I'm, then I can use that to hold up here to in to ensure that. Uh, that I'm drilling straight through. If I if I just use my drill, I don't know, it you can move sideways or up and down. I just want to make sure they're nice and square to the uh to the board here. So uh so I'll get uh I'll get that done. This is where it needs to be. So I'm gonna make a mark on each one of these just so I don't lose track if I accidentally If I accidentally bump it or something, I don't want to have to re-measure everything, so I just made myself a couple marks, so I'm good there. Um, then once I get them on there, then I'll go up here to the top, and I will work on making sure that I've got nice through holes here. Um, and, uh, you know, it'll take some just have to rotate it a little bit and move it a little, but I don't want to mess with that until I know these are anchored, so, um, yeah. So let's, let's walk through those steps here. starting this so just making a mark that the uh, when I come back with a little fixture I make I'm confident that the drill will find the same hole so Now we'll take a clamp and we'll clamp the back side since I have a I'm covering, I'm covering up the front hole. So we'll uh, capture the rear one here. Just hold that in place. Then we can take this one off. Okay, we'll drill these two front ones.
Okay, so all I've done is taken yeah. a just taken a board here, and uh, I've uh, just drilled through it, and I'm just going to use that to uh, just keep me square, so I can hold this tight against the uh, can hold it tight against there, and drill straight through. I mean, I only have to drill. 12 holes, so um, not making a permanent tool, just something to quickly do this. So, all right. Now you can see. Uh, show you real quick. You can see I just drilled just far enough where when I get this aligned, it'll be uh, real easy for that drill bit to fall into that, fall into that hole, so. All right, I decided to make this a little easier on myself. Actually, rotate the fuselage. And that's how we ensure that uh, we've got a perfect fit. Now, I already know that this screw, potentially this screw, um, maybe even the back screw, but probably not, is not going to be long enough uh, because of the extra material. So if I take a look in here. Yeah, it's really these front two. Um, that are going to have to be, uh, I'm going to have to purchase some that are actually a little bit longer than that, so. But, what I think I will do for now is uh, I'll just use an AN bolt for these two. Yep, 3 13. We'll do the trick for now. Um, yeah, that'll work perfect, so. Now, this calls for a, uh, this, this calls for a number 10 flat washer. Um, which uh, moment? Now, when this gets installed permanently, um, we'll have uh, we'll actually have the. Uh, uh, 
we'll have the proper washer. I'm just using low torque right now just to uh, just to get this in place because these uh, AN washers actually um, are just a little bit too big around to fit properly. So I'm going to have to get some number 10. And the plans actually call for just a number 10 flat washer. So uh, I'm just going to use these small washers just for now. And I'm just going to tighten them with low torque and that'll get everything in position so I can go to the next step. So. Now I could have uh, I could have ground a flat spot in those AN washers, and they would work just fine. But uh, I'll see what I can find in uh, maybe a probably a stainless uh, just a stainless flat washer that's slightly smaller in diameter. Um, All right, I'm gonna flip it over and uh, and get the other side. All right. All right. So before I put the uh, landing gear up here, I just need to make a uh, just gonna transfer my center line here. Now I'm going to take my chalk line and I'm going to stick a drill bit in one of the holes in the back. I'm going to pull a chalk line. I'm going to snap a line all the way to here. We're going to be using that as a reference here shortly, so... So I, I just want to gently run my drill bit through um, through here because I don't I don't want to eat up any aluminum, so I have to be really careful uh, when doing this. And 
actually want, I left intentionally left the brackets loose, a little bit loose until I actually get these bolts in because it might have made it a little more challenging uh, to do that. So. And there we go, we're in. Now I can finish flipping the washers and the nuts on these guys. Um, I Let's see, it looks like I used a uh, 3-14. I bet it calls for a 3-13. I used 14s the first time because I didn't have any 13s because they were on back order, but now I have them, so. No excuse, right? Let's get the 13s. So these are all bolted together now. They look really good. Um, everything fits nice. There's great clearance around the tube. Um, so that's awesome. And uh, that methodology of um, putting the bolts through the axle first and then tightening these brackets made like all the difference in the world. Um, so, and I'm super happy with the fit here, like how everything turned out. Um, it looks really good. This is gonna be just barely, I, you won't even notice it. I mean, like hardcore Minimax people, they're gonna go, yeah, that's different. <laughs> but other than that, it's, everybody else is just going to think this is the way it's supposed to be. So, the dimensions, adding a quarter inch, worked out perfect. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, now, now we're ready to, um, we're ready to start putting these tubes in right here. Go from here to here. And that's going to help us make sure that we're where we need to be. And the way we're going to do that is with a, uh, with a plumb bob and show that to you here. All right, so we're going to put this over the put this over the center line of our shaft and uh, clamp it in place. And um, that's going to be right there. Let me get my clamp. I'm just going to wrap that around a couple times. I'm going to go the opposite direction.
And then we made our chalk line um, earlier, which you can see right there. And uh, this is actually hovering right around the exact center of that line. So I think when it finally comes to rest, it's probably gonna be, if anything, slightly to this side of it, but mostly it's gonna be really close to being right on that chalk line, so uh, yeah. All right. Um, that means we don't have to do a whole lot. Like, that's crazy. Um, okay, so uh, this step is we're going to take our tube here and we're going to go over to the saw. And we're going to cut it in half, so. So around 24 inches. All right, so I think I'm just gonna, around 19 inches actually gives me uh, more than enough. So I'll cut it at uh, 19 and I'll have to kind of go at an angle here on the saw, but then uh, Then we'll, we'll square it off after that. Okay, so now what has to happen here? Um, what has to happen is we have to flatten this end and we flatten it until this uh, fits in there. So, and then we'll end up, uh, we'll end up drilling a hole through it. But uh, that's the first step is we're gonna get it flat until we can get that eye bolt in there. And I'm gonna first figure out how far I wanna go So I just want to go until this part hits that. So we want to flatten it about that much. All right, so I need a little more leverage. So and once I get that started, and I can fit the eye bolt in here, like so. Except I want to go just a little bit further. Then I just have to, I got to clean out the uh, shavings in here. Kind of get these edges off. Then it'll drop, drop in. And then we're going to flip it over this way. Actually, I need to move my vice up just a little bit. All right, then I want to turn it over this way so I can put the eye bolt just above the top of the vise here. And we'll make sure it's square.
And then we want to squeeze this down on the bolt. So the next step is to get a 3 16 hole in here. Um, so we're back. This is, a, this is we're working with something flat, so it's no big deal here. Um, so we'll just use our eye bolt to uh, basically come up with the, the location here. We'll just back it off just a little bit, so. All right, I'll get this one here. All right. All right, so once the uh, plumb bob settled down, it's actually it's actually right on the mark. So, all right, so I've got these uh, got these installed now, um, just with a, a bolt in there holding them. Then I have to go up top, and I need to mark. And you can see this one here. So now I just need to go up and mark where the uh, tube is crossing the hole, so I can figure out where to drill those and at this point it's important to keep track of everything's location so the axle is marked for forward um, I know which part of the axle is forward and I know which one is the right leg and which one's the left leg so I don't get it flipped around um, and uh, trying to figure out the best way the best way to do this And I think I'm going to drill this undersize. And then finish it off uh, after that. Right, so I can see my mark. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to drill this hole with a 532, and then I'm going to come back. I'm gonna, that way I can drill through with 3 16 when I get it up there so if I'm off a tiny bit it'll actually it'll help me correct it so now I got to get this centered up because I moved everything
we go. Helped plug it in. All right, so now I'm going to get this back on here. Time to mark that. Right forward. Take our drill and we're going to come in from behind and since we're slightly undersized on the hole we should be able to just find it and go right on through. Probably a 13. Nope. Team's not even close. It's probably a 16. Alright, so um, before you go, I was just going to uh, let you know I picked up my, um, my Usher gascalator. I was trying to figure out which one I wanted to use, and um, I came to the conclusion that I like this one the best. Um, and so, I'm just going to show it to you. If you're not familiar with this particular gascalator, this is uh, what it looks like. And what uh, the arrangement that I'll have, this is for if you have a primer. If you don't, you just uh, put a plug in that. Um, I am going to uh, come in to this thing from the back side. So I'll actually have a kind of an elbow here. And so I'll flow from my tanks. This will be down kind of by my uh, sort of below my right knee, basically. Um, kind of in that in that area so I'll, I'll have an elbow here I have to build a uh, I'll figure out what kind of bracket I'm going to use uh, uh, make to, to suspend it it's got the holes right there for um, for that bracket and then I'll come I'll plug this one uh, and I'll plug this one and so my fuel will come in here and then it'll go out here up to uh, up toward the uh, uh, carburetor obviously and in my case it'll be it'll go like this I, I'm, I thought about going this direction and coming in here and then going out there but mounting was a, a much bigger deal so I'm gonna go this way and just after my uh, after it comes out of here I'll actually uh, so uh, let me see if I can explain this I'm coming out of the tanks my left wing will connect with my right wing on the right side of the on the right side of the plane. Then it'll come down the right hand wall of the cockpit at a uh, angle toward the floor, and it will come in the, the gas escalator here. And then uh, it'll come out here, and it'll go to the fuel shutoff. So the uh, fuel shutoff valve will be basically. Uh, over on that uh, right hand side. So I have this fuel shut off after the gas escalator 
and then it'll go from the shutoff to a facet pump, uh, which will be my, uh, the facet pump will be my backup um, uh, pump since, uh, since the carburetor's down on the bottom. Um, and it's just, uh, uh, this is Zenith carburetor is just gravity fed. Uh, obviously we'll be doing a fuel flow test and all that just to make sure all this works. But uh, anyway, I just thought I would, uh, thought I'd share that with you, how that's going to work out. I've got a little bit of work to do um, to sort of figure that out, but not too bad. And then, but for today, this is the super cool part is we got all of this put together and done and everything is connected. Um, when I put that first one on right there, um, I settled the plumb bob, it was dead on the red line. And so uh, I feel super good about that. And so it was easy once I got that one locked in to get the second one locked in, uh, it was easy. I marked these on the back side. So whenever I take this apart, um, I'll actually trim those tubes a little bit and uh, yeah, everything fits just really, really well. Couldn't be, uh, couldn't be happier with how, with how that went. So, all right. So thanks for hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. And uh, I will, uh, um, I will catch you later as always. See ya.